one with the five-time All-American Miss Basketball. What else? Made her mark in the SEC, yeah. Big 12. And now Miss CEO, right. Okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay. So we just kind of want to get into beginning. Who is Taya Cooper? Um, Taya Cooper is a jack of all traits. Uh, she's fun, she's outgoing, uh, adventurous, and really just somebody who just want to enjoy life and, you know, help other people. That's perfect. I mean, we started off looking at Twitter. That's how we knew you was in NYC. Everybody was like <laughs> in a frenzy, like, Taya in NYC. <laughs> but let's get into the New York tweets, starting with the airport. Were you flying to LaGuardia <laughs> or JFK? I, I flew to JFK. Okay, how would you rate your experience? Two out of ten. Oh. <laughs> okay. But that's probably that. because we flew into like B-59 and I had to get all the way to B-2. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Immediately off the plane. <laughs> so that's the only, that was the only thing. It was just a long walk. It just surprised me a little bit. Right. And then the little fast walking things that you walk on and go faster <laughs> was down. Oh no, so you was like literally going around every single thing. On oh, foot, mm-mm. yes. Mm-mm. And then all the carts was going this way, so I couldn't get a ride that way. Because <laughs> I'm going to get a ride. Mm-hmm. For sure. And you said something about the smell? Does yes, New York have a certain smell? It's a funky out here. Oof. Y'all don't think so? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can't be out here and not say it's not funky. Because at that point, your nose just don't work. I think, yeah, if you're not from here, then you first get here, it's a little like yeah. you get taken back a little bit. Oh, so like I was. You got used I think to it. I feel like I get used to it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's just an alarming smell to get used to. But they said it was um, something's burning. So oh yeah, we just got that. It was something like in Canada, and then this. Mm, yeah, mm. we're gonna chop it up to that. Yeah, <laughs> and then 24 hours in New York. What you been up to? Um, I've been with Meta. Um, I was at an event for. All the apps like WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, um, and then I've been with Koi. Koi's album is dropping, and oh, okay. she was doing a press run out here. And then uh, Meta's doing a thing called It's Your World, so we tapped into me and Koi's world on how like we just made it our own, made our own lanes. Wow. She's a trendsetter, and yeah, it was pretty cool. So with that, like, kind of get into how you got into being a CEO kind of running in your own lane, making your own path, and just like being Taya Cooper in your own way and kind of showcasing that, kind of get into how you got into that. Honestly, it started in college and, um, you know, WNBA spots is real limited. And um, I just seen a lot of people like get cut or get waved or get hurt. And it's like a lot of basketball players end up losing their identity when sports stop or the opportunity stop or it's just not there or it's like, you know, they take time off. And I just didn't want that to happen for me, and I knew I was more than just a basketball player. So I kind of just wanted to find a way to make my own lane, but I also didn't want to work. So (laughs) to be honest, I really wanted to find a way to make money without, like, um, having to be in an office or having a schedule or stuff like that. But I ended up having to work full time, so. But in your own way. Yeah. In your own way. Exactly. <laughs> I can do it at home at least. Right. Just remote. Exa- exactly. Yeah. And I love that because you hear people say all the time, the ball stops bouncing at some point. So, like, having that plan, kind of having, knowing what you want to do, like, that's so dope. And for, obviously, the young girls to be able to see that and see you doing that and seeing you be able to conquer that and mm-hmm. just build your own path outside of basketball, um, that's dope. Like, just being able to see that, that I don't want to be that. I want, I want to do no, that, seriously. so it's like, yeah. No, but, um, when it comes to stepping outside of your um, occupation, whatever it is, whatever sport it is, a lot of people don't like believe that you could do more than one thing. Like it's always, okay, she's not focused no more, she's doing this, she's doing that, she's not, in the, she's not on the basketball court. But even when I was playing, it was like, um, I was on TikTok, and it was like, oh, she's not, she's not focused on TikTok. TikTok is three minutes. Right. Practice of six hours. <laughs> exactly. We're, what? Yeah. So it was like just a lot of like negative thoughts on stepping out or doing your own thing or doing too much or whatever the case may be. It's like I ain't really paid that no mind, and I was like, man, you're not gonna stop me from getting money. So, did you feel kind of any pressure from that? Like, because I know people are gonna talk regardless. They say whatever, regardless. But knowing that 
there's still kind of that separation between women's basketball players being able to be multifaceted and being able to be multidimensional and being able to do other things, TikTok, being a CEO, doing other things outside of basketball and st people still thinking that they're not focused on their craft. Like, did you feel any pressure from that, knowing that that's not what it is at all because you were still doing what you had to do on and off the court? Well, I mean, I always went by no response is a response. And um, I also feel like they're going to say what they want regardless. Like, whether I'm just playing basketball or I'm not, it's like, y'all going to keep talking. So I always believe one, one monkey don't stop no show. So I'm going to keep going regardless. And it's not, I, I just feel like the work going to show for itself. Like, you can say I'm not focused, but it's it's growing, it's going, like, it's like, it's showing. It's, like, yeah, yeah, like, exactly. like, you can see it, like, you can see you are thriving. I'm focused on something, exactly. very much something, so, yeah. That's going then. Up here, we got little brother right there for you, oh, you know. I remember that. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> and we're going to talk about the family ties, because, like, being a businesswoman and being a basketball player, Y'all's family has CEOs, big bosses. So is it a family that's rooted in basketball that also are CEOs or a family rooted in business mentality CEO that happen to play basketball as well? You know what? Um, my dad always told us like to, to use basketball and don't let basketball use you. Like to always like, um, whether that's building who you want to be, what you want to get into, like the connections you make through basketball, use them. And um, he's the jack of all trades, for real, for real. Like <laughs> he, when I tell you, he done done, he's done everything from car dealership to agency to basketball to football. Like he's just all over the place. And I've always seen that growing up. Like he's never not had a job. Like <laughs> he's always doing something and it's always big. Like he's never done it this small. Everything he do is big. So I think just growing up, seeing that, and him installing that is just like, we just thought the world was ours, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. And then with that, you've had a journey with basketball from the college level. You've played at three of the five meccas of basketball with Tennessee, South Carolina, and Baylor. <laughs> like working under some of the best coaches and in the best environments for basketball, what are some things that you've taken away or experiences from each of those stops? Yeah, that sounds crazy. Every time, every time I hear how many schools I went to, everybody be like, I went on a college tour. But no, I really did, and I actually, like, everybody experience is different. Yes, everybody wants to go to one, one school for four years, but going to all three of them schools, the relationships that I did make from, like, boosters to, like, everybody involved into the school is, like, crazy, especially with South Carolina. South, Dawn, um, shout out to her. She's a great person. Um, I was, I had, the year I set out, that's when Asia and them was there, so... Just being around her and the way she played and was so consistent. Like, I did not see her miss a shot in practice. Like, That's Asia's a really a dog, for real. So, like, just behind the scenes of that. And then um, Dawn really just stressed, like, the relationships you make. So that was just a huge thing. And I learned a lot from her. And then where else I went? Oh, Tennessee. <laughs> I started at Tennessee. And, um, you know, freshman year is kind of crazy. Everybody just young and... I ain't gonna say dumb, but young and reckless, I guess. Um, okay, <laughs> I ain't gonna call nobody that. But um, yeah, so freshman year was cool. I learned a lot. Um, the coaching staff kind of changed, the players changed, and then that's when I ended up South, South Carolina, and I ended up at Baylor. And Baylor was like my best year basketball-wise, but all three schools were great schools. Like I have nothing bad to say about none of them or the experience. Like whether the basketball went good or not, I had a great time at all three schools. That's awesome. Is there like a, like the biggest lesson you feel like you've learned, like going through those processes at each school? Like, what's something like the biggest lesson you feel, good or bad, that you've learned? Um, I think a lot of people like you know, when you down, you be real down, or when you up, you real up. After all the ups and downs of them college, <laughs> the college, the colleges from Tennessee to South Carolina to Baylor, it was just like I was just numb to going down, and it was just like I just stayed in the middle, so. You kind of just get to used to like keep going because I tore my ACL, sat out, and this was when transfers wasn't <laughs> what it is now. A lot. <laughs> I, I'm talking about I lost at least three years. Right. That's crazy. Like, <laughs> shout out to y'all for being allowed, but the rest of us, <laughs> I had to sit out a lot. So I had ample amount of time to just sit with everything. So, I mean, I guess it was a blessing in disguise. 
For sure. And what would Taya Cooper be in the NIL scene? Man, I would have ate down. When I tell <laughs> you, oh my God. Oh my God. And then every three, first of all, being at one school is cool, but three major schools. Yeah. Mm hmm. We cashing. Man, what? I'm so sick. What would have been like your dream deal to do while you were in college, you think? I. Everything, <laughs> everything. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have put one deal down. Every. I would have did everything. Everything. What? I would have been at NASCAR, Legos, just seeing stuff. Like, yep. <laughs> I would have been going for everything. <laughs> Food I don't even eat. Yep. I would have done everything. I feel that. Food I would never eat. Right. Now you see me. Posing. <laughs> <laughs> Go get y'all. Man, what? <laughs> Go get y'all. Man, what? <laughs> I ain't never been to Arby's. For sure using that. Yep. And then now you've been able to capitalize off of it as well with the bundles, Hollywood luxury hair. Oh, yeah. First, tell us what yeah, hair is let's this. Let's get into the look. What hair is this? This is Burmese curling. Okay. <laughs> um, no, nah, with the with the hair, I was sitting at home and I was so tired. I had literally was just about to buy bundles and I was like, you know, I'm sick of this because it's like $700 mm -hmm. for some good hair. You you don't need bundles, but <laughs> yeah, like for the girls that do wear bundles, it's expensive, and I was sick and tired of buying it. So I wanted to come up with a brand for athletes because we gotta change our hair so much, we sweat in all that stuff. So I wanted to come up with reasonable pri reasonable prices for good bundles, and I wanted it to be quality because hair be shedding, right? It be getting tangled, and so I had to like go and actually seek out a lot of vendors, get a lot of samples, and then um, my favorite part is what I went to school for is the marketing part, honestly. So, the bundles is cool, but the marketing for the bundles is the funnest part. Yeah. So that came in handy. Yeah. For sure, that marketing. <laughs> okay. So, like, going, going with that, like, what made you, like, what was your, the point where you were kind of like, okay, this is going to be my brand. This is going to be a big deal. I want to have all these athletes wearing my brand. Like, when did you kind of realize that? When I was in college. See, the thing is, I always had the dream of doing this. I just ain't had the funds. Mm. Ooh, okay. But now that I got the funds, <laughs> <laughs> now that I got the funds, you can make the plan happen. Because when I tell you it is expensive to start off, everybody be like, yeah, go uh, do what you believe, do what you want. That's expensive. No, seriously, because the samples, the inventory, the website, everything costs money. Even getting the little, um, Especially when you don't know how to do stuff. Like when you first branching off and not everybody believe in what you're doing. So it's like, yeah, I'll help you. You call, they'll answer. So it's like, uh, when well, you actually got to do stuff on your own, even filling out little papers like the EIN numbers, the social security, all that stuff for the business page. It's a lot. And you really don't know what you're doing, but you do it. And next thing you know, it's up. So that that is very expensive. Not the EIN, but that stuff. <laughs> So like what feeling did you get though? Like when you realized like this was a brand that is kind of taken off and you know, you had Angel wearing, uh, doing a photo shoot with you wearing your brand. Like what feeling of kind of like, okay, like this is happening for me. I did this, I built this, I'm a CEO. Right. Um, I actually surprised everybody. I did everything. First of all, I wanted, I wanted to do everything by myself. That probably was a pride thing. But <laughs> I didn't really want to ask for no help because I don't be wanting opinions. Like, if I say I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Don't tell me reasons why I shouldn't do it, because right. that'll piss me off. Like, find ways to help me do it. So, um, I kind of surprised everybody, like, oh, I'm dropping something in, like, two months or whatever, like, to my intimate circle. And um, when I did it, I thought it did terrible. But I didn't upload the site. Oh, my god! So the site wasn't public to, like, them, but I could see the site. So I'm like, yo, not one no. <laughs> I'm like, dang, I thought y'all was messing with me for real. But yeah, I didn't have the site up, so I thought it wasn't selling at all for like a week. And then I tried to go and buy it for myself. I'm like, something's off. It has to be. Because they was commenting on it, but I'm like, did y'all buy it for real? Like, so one of my fan pages hit me up like, girl, the site's not up. And I was like, what? Makes sense. And then I, when I actually uploaded the site, then it started. It started, ding, 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 ding. Because you get a little ring from Squarespace. It's like, ding. So I, was I like, know you love hearing that sound, it. right? Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, did, I was like, I knew, knew y'all wouldn't do me like that. But yeah, that was tough. That was fun. But then um, 
I actually did Didi first. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did Didi Richards first. And um, no, actually, I did Bernice first. Bernice Burgos was the first person to actually put the hair in. And then um, I was like, it's cool to have them like put it on and then make their own videos. Mm -hmm. But I was like, that's boring. <laughs> so I actually wanted to market my hair for real, for real. And then um, Instagram got all these ads you could do and stuff. So it's fun to like figure things out. But um, I think like the sponsors is actually where I'm going now. So and collabing with people. Yeah, That's perfect. How do you reward yourself like different from winning a game in the last seconds to now like being able to sell out? Cha-ching. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we gonna put that all No, in for real. Um, you know, part of me is struggling with living in the moment and then thinking for the future when it comes financially. Cause I want that bag. Mm. I want the working bag. And every time I see one, I want a different color. But it's like, say your money, be frugal. Like a lot of this stuff is like real temporary to real trendy. So it's like, I'm cool on a lot of stuff now, but like, I'm just like on to the part where I don't know, I guess I'm older. I guess I gotta be responsible. <laughs> so I guess, I'm guess. actually looking into property now. So Ooh, okay. okay, that'll be fun. We gonna That's throw a big party. We gonna come and do a listen up, girls, at the new property. I'm actually um, no, I'm never doing a. This is my crib thing, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> not the crib thing. But I am doing. I am gonna do an event in Miami at this new space. And it's like, it's really dope. The space is really dope. Well, you know, I, I don't know, you know, I like Miami. Yeah, um, yeah everybody loves Miami. I think everybody would come out to Miami. That's a good place. So, um, yeah, stay tuned for that. It might be in July for real. I don't know when y'all, when y'all, when you gotta go back to school. Girl, I'll be there. I'll be there. That's all right. Yeah, y'all free now. now. I'll be there. <laughs> y'all gonna do whatever y'all want in college now. This is crazy. It is crazy. Thanks. Do you ever think about going back to basketball or anything? Yeah, I do. I mean, honestly, um, I still been hooping. I still been training. It's just like, um, I mean, as y'all seen, everybody got waved. Everybody got cut. Right. Yeah. Yes. So it was yeah. tough out yeah. here. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, but it's like, <laughs> like it's the. I just wanted to be something where it's like y'all actually want me to be there. It's not like oh, come in for two days and then right. like I don't really have time for the back and forth, but. Right. Um, yeah, no, I'm still hooping. If the opportunity presents itself, I for sure will go, but it's kind of quiet. Ooh, let me see. I got about two years left. Yeah, that's crazy. Didn't the, the year that I actually got the hoop a full year at Baylor, it got cut short because of COVID. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. That would have been probably a national championship. Man, what? Yeah, yeah, for sure. That team was stacked. Oh stacked God. to the team. Godly. Mm -mm -mm. Could we see you on the sidelines though, coaching? You and Kim Moki would be a cold duo on the sidelines. I don't know, coaching is kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's more full time than me and a player. Oh, that's true. That is true. That's true. Jesus. Calls, day and night. Yeah. Day. Travel. But the game day fits would be hit. You would eat. No, for sure. If I could just sit on the <laughs> sideline and say my little one two one two, it'd be cool. But like the whole off season, mm -mm. all that, it's like quiet <laughs> but coaching cool though so with like the fits let's get into like some of this fashion yeah. you've kind of been into that from what I've seen like since college like mm -hmm. you beat the fits from head to toe <laughs> literally and then seeing like your league fits when you was playing showing up like your fits are fire mm -hmm. so like what kind of got you so into fashion or like just into like keeping yourself looking that good, basically. <laughs> really, my parents, my mom, I'm talking about if my ponytail is not brushed to a T, she used to be on my head at halftime. You would think I'm having a bad game, she's talking about my ponytail. Like, that side of my mom, she really was on the beauty part of like just being a girl and keeping yourself together. And then my dad, he's so obnoxious. And like, he gonna be from head to toe with anything. And he been like that since I was little, so. Seeing that and then having her on the side in my ear about my hair or my lip gloss or <laughs> like anything, it was just like kind of installed since I was little. Like I used to go to the AAU games when I was in high school and I would pull up in like a dress or like, we was real obnoxious. Like one of the games we pulled up in a helicopter. What? And, no, we was really out. 
just doing anything at that time. <laughs> we was doing anything. In a helicopter to the yes. AU tourney? Oh, my God. It was God. crazy. And I was scared because I'd never been on a helicopter. But I wanted to do it because no, literally was no reason. It was no reason. We were just out there doing anything. People like, zoo, zoo. what is that? <laughs> it was no reason. It was no reason, literally. But my dad had made AOT, and um, I got to like help design like some of the clothes. Like, uh, you know how you don't really got gear for real. So we had our own gear. Like we was the only team with gear. We customized our our uniforms. Going back and looking at them, they were kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. But that was the style back then. I swear. Yeah. We had like tight fitted uniforms because I hated the baggy uniforms. We literally had like a, you know, Under Armour shirts that you work in, the tight ones. Yeah, the baggy. yeah that was our uniform. Oh. Yeah, it was tough. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta go back and look. I gotta find some old pictures and, and please look at don't. That. <laughs> Do not find old pictures. And now you're styling everybody too with Ladesia. Like, how did you get into that? Oh yeah, Ladesia. We went to South Carolina together. That's my dog. Um, no, nah, that's really like my best friend. That's my little sister for real. But she had um, went to multiple schools too. And then she ended up being a national championship. It was crazy because we went to South Carolina together. She ended up going to Mizzou. I ended up going to Baylor. And she called me after one of her last games. And she was like, I'm transferring. And at the time, it was like, it's, you only got one more year left. It was COVID. It was like, for real? You for real going to transfer? And she was dead serious. And at the time, Moki had just found out she was going back to Baylor. But nobody knew she was going to LSU though. And then she come out on a private plane going to LSU. <laughs> so it was like, oh shoot. And then the first year she had there, um, she didn't really get to bring nobody. She just played with the players that was already there. And then she scratched the whole thing and was bringing new people in, but she had no post player. Mm -hmm. And I knew what Kim did for me. So I was like, girl, why don't y'all go to LSU? Like they don't have no post. You're gonna play f like 40 minutes. But Kim didn't know about Ladeja for real, and then Ladeja never, you know, she never met him. So um, I told her to go up there. They scheduled a visit, and they fell in love with each other. So that's okay. dope. See, yeah, it was crazy. Power of the transfer portal. Man, what? <laughs> it's Ch it'll handy. change your life. Right. Don't stay where you ain't want it. <laughs> it matters. Me. It matters who's gonna help build you up as a player. Your brand now with NIL, like that matters. Man, and what? LSU has done that. Great job of that. Done it. Every they got an NL, NIL lady on staff. Yep. Who, Jen, uh, Jen? Yeah. That's my like, girl. Having that. Literally gave her her own job. Literally. that wasn't a job. At all. Nowhere else. I don't <laughs> that know was not a anywhere job else that someone has that. At all. They literally like, just that. made that up. <laughs> Unless she does anything. Like, that's not even a job description. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, where, I didn't even know this was a job. I'm, I'm asking why. <laughs> no, for <laughs> real. She is right. eating right Getting now. Getting it done. No, for sure. But, so kind of with like, going back to like the fashion side, you see the separation in kind of beauty and basketball. Like people are, you see people saying, oh, you can't do both. If you look, if you're worried about your lashes and your nails on the court, like you're not worried about basketball for real. I get that all the time. I'm sure you got that all the time. Mm -hmm. And also being able to dress how you want, dress girly, dress cute, like off the court. What's the correlation and what do you feel you need to see grow a little bit more in order to kind of combine the two a little bit better? <clears throat> well, first, I think that people who play in sports, they just got to stop caring about what people say because people are sitting at home just saying anything right. on the internet. I'm talking about anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like even entertaining the thoughts of you can't do this or you can't look this way or you worried about this, or, you worried about that. It's like, girl, I got a job. Leave me alone. <laughs> like, so I think like with fashion, it's like, if you worry about it too much, then it's like, do you really want to be a basketball? She just want to be cute. It's like, shut up. Right. <laughs> like, I'm, like, you could go out there and have 40, and it's like, they are cool. As soon as you have 10 points, five points, it's like, oh, she not focused. Right. Nigga, I can have a bad game. Right. <laughs> like, what? What does that have to do with my clothes? What does that have to do with me being cute? Yeah. And then it's like, they've made being cute like a thing where it's like something you got to turn on. Like, no, we are just cute. Like, it's not a thing that we're doing. We're literally just looking like that. Literally. Like, <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I just kept myself up. Right. Like, like not, it's not a try hard thing. It's like, exactly. it's already a thing. So I don't know. I mean, it's a he say, she say thing, but I would say be cute. I mean, who like what? 
So basically saying I'm ugly. Because if you think I'm trying to do that, you think I'm ugly for real and, I'm, and that's something I'm doing, it's not. Like I woke up like that. Right, so like with like the NIL brands, like people are trying to see kind of more beauty brands right. sponsoring athletes, mm -hmm. specifically women's basketball players. Because like our edges stay laid, during games, nails are done, our lashes, lashes stay good, but you got people who don't, who, whose lashes are falling out the next day. Like, so it's like, how does it stay? So it's like, right. So it's like, what do you think these athletes or the beauty brands, what do they need to do better in order to kind of partner with each other? Because I think everyone wants to see more of these female athletes. I mean, even you, you're starting with Angel. That's a beauty brand partnering with a female one of the top female basketball players right now in college basketball. So like, what should you see more? Um, I would say on, so being the athlete and wanting the beauty deals, it's like, yeah, you're wearing it, but you're not like marketable. So being like, you, it's, it's okay to like, like behind the scenes, now that I am doing marketing, it's like, it's hard. It's like, yeah, she's doing it, mm -hmm. but can I market her? Like, is she marketable? So it's like trying to figure out, like, yeah, the basketball girls are wearing it, but are y'all marketable? Like, could I use you, like, on whatever the case it may be? So it's like the difference between them two. So, like, when you have, um, like, even when you're getting a marketing deal, it's like your engagements, your the behind the scenes of your page, like, um, your following, your following, all the people that support you. It's like, if I do give you this deal, because with marketing, it's a lot of money. So if I do pay you 100000 to wear my edge control, it's like, are you really bringing me business or are you just going on Instagram? I'm like, yeah, I wear this. Right. Yeah. Like, are, is your content going to, like, really, like, get people to buy it? So um, with that, it's like they're giving you money to, like, market the, the brand. They're not giving you money to, like, then pay again to do a commercial, then pay again to do it. Like, part of me paying you to be marketable is the commercial. Right. Right. Like, you're supposed to be marketing it. So I would just say, like, just trying to be marketable. Like a lot of people think social media is like a distraction, it's this, that, and the third. If you use social media as a business, it's not a distraction. It's literally a job. Like it's a job. Like nobody going there to just be playing around. People are going on there to make money. So it's like a lot of people are asleep on the possibilities with social media because you could meet somebody randomly, slide in somebody's DM, like, oh, I like your t shirts. Next thing you know, you got a deal. So it's like closed mouths don't get fed. So. Yeah, I would say that. Just Stamps. continue with drop market. Yeah, it's right here. Stamps. Yeah. That's, nice. That's for sure. And as we wrap up, we were talking about, like, I guess, story arcs and how people start off and then the point of the turning point and now, like, the rebirth of Taya Cooper. What would you say is your next chapter? Like, if somebody was to ask, like, all right, what's happening next? What can we expect? What is the, what's going on? How would you respond? You know, none of this, none of my life has been planned out like five year goals or nothing like that. I, the stuff just be happening. Like, <laughs> it's just, it's just so random. And then, I mean, I would just say what's next for me is like, I'm not saying no to really anything. Not that I'm going for anything, but it's like the the possibilities are just endless. So whether it's acting or I don't know, whatever I might start doing, it could be random. I could go start doing WWE, but. <laughs> like whatever it is I just want to like enjoy it and just tap into different things like and just be adventurous when it comes to a job like there's not like one thing where it's like oh I don't want to do that it's like oh let me hear about it like I'm interested so I would say that the possibilities is just endless that's that's perfect my dad says like everybody has a plan but few people have the blueprint and you've been able to capitalize off of the blueprint and making it happen no matter what bag you in mm -hmm. And now we're going to get matching Birkins. Okay. <laughs> I also want to help the younger generation. Like, um, I don't know. Have you been to, like, high schools and stuff? Like, have you talked to young girls and, like, yeah. heard their story? It's yeah. kind of crazy what's going on down there now. Right. Like, it's I didn't so go different. through. Yeah, yeah I did not so go through different. what they're going through mm -hmm. right now. And I, maybe it's because social media is so, like, the end all be all. Right. And um, I think people, a lot, of, a lot of people are, like, basing their identity off followers and all that stuff. So, um that mental health stuff is really real. Like at a young age now, like it, it wasn't like that when I was younger. Well, I wasn't aware of it. Right, right. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't, maybe it wasn't just like.
publicized. Yeah. I guess people just dealing with it silently. But yeah, like just hearing those stories. So like really going back to the high schools and you know being, I guess like a visual of like you can't be that because a lot of people grow up not seeing like what they want to be when they grow up. That's so right. really just going back and helping the young girls believe in themselves for real. For sure. If you could shout out like somebody that you've been seeing working hard, whether it's on the court or off the court. Um, well, all my girls at LSU, Flage, Angel, Asia. Um, Kim is eating right now. Yeah. She got a roster. <laughs> <laughs> she got a roster, so I'm excited for them. I love what they're doing. Um, yeah, and Flage Mama, I want to shout out Flage Mama. Oh yeah, Miss Kia, Miss Kia for sure. Miss Kia, she is she is doing her big one right now. Like for a, for a lot of people, she's not just Flage. Like she really look out for everybody. Um, and I got something coming out with her too. So yeah, stay tuned. Okay. I'll stay tuned. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. Taya, we appreciate you. We appreciate you sharing your story and just kind of sharing who Miss Taya Cooper is. Thank yes. you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Of course. And that's a wrap with Listen Up, Girls. Yeah, episode, episode one. Episode one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>